session, I mean same product, will offer the same thing. For example, electronics. You go into any store and you want to buy a TV. The TV, you go to any store, probably they'll quote you the same price. But it is how that store handles that customer that he will prove that my TV is, you should buy the TV from me rather than any other store because of these factors. So first I said was the price. Make the customer feel that he got a best bargain. Second, second point is that customer service is a very generalized. I'll come down there a little bit. Second point that I would like to highlight here is that it should, it should be an experience for you. Brand experience. Brand experience, whatever it is. You tell the customer, my product, yes, it is different. It could be the same product. Now you go to buy a uh, say one uh, mattress. You go to one shop, the guy will tell you something. You go to another shop, he'll tell you something like that. But it would be the best option would be that you tell the customer, give him an illustration or rather create in him a desire that if you sleep on this bed, what is the experiences that you are going to get out of it? Experience in the sense that physically he'll experience it or the feeling that he gets, whether it is comfort, whether he gets a good sleep or whatever it is. Okay. Number three point. Number three point will be what is the function of the product? I have been to many places where you try to buy a thing. I mean, you want to buy a thing. You want to know more about that product. Okay. But you realize that the salesman there doesn't know anything about the product. Okay. He doesn't know. So here, as an entrepreneur, you must know your product. You must know your product thoroughly so that any customer or your uh, prospective customer will ask you a question. It could be anything. It could be in your service. Okay? You are providing some service. Now, customer will have 101 doubts, 101 questions will be there. You should be patient enough to listen to every doubt to know to give knowledgeable and correct answer to what the doubts are. Basically, you should know your product first. You should know what is it that you are selling. That is very important. Somebody here said, now, after these points, I just want to put a general question to everybody here. I'll take you to a different plane and I mean this. Now, for example, if you want to buy a pair of jeans, okay? I know many of you have got your personal choices that you like to buy from certain shops or you want to buy from certain sites or you want to buy particular brand, particular this thing. Now, what is it that influences you? Can you put it in just one word? Quality, customer experience, style, comfort, brand. Who said brand? Can you define brand to me? Uh, it's just an abstract uh, value or face value or something that it's a reputation built by product by itself. I open my TV. Okay. Sachin Telunkar comes out and he will be blah 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 about some you know toothpaste or whatever, whatever. 
Okay. Would you consider that your favorite brand? Personally, I wouldn't do so, but uh, as a marketer, do consider that as favorite brand. Why do you not consider it as your favorite brand, or rather, your you would consider it to be your brand? Uh, I might have other choices, like I might like someone else, or I might. You mean some other cricketer? Possibly. Or uh, slim star? There, there could be chances. There could be chances that way. Mm, that means you are allowing yourself to influence, to be influenced as to which brand is good or which brand is not good for you. Is that how you put it? Not to me personally, but yeah, as a market, yes, as a whole, they do. Okay. Well, <clears throat> that gentleman was very uh, correct. We get influenced a lot by advertisements, by uh, branding, they spend so much money, all these companies spend so much money, sports shoe brands, okay, deodorants, shampoos, what not, they spend so much money just to try to influence the customer and the customer is influenced, mind you, to a certain extent, yes, but if you ask me, your fa favorite brand should depend upon what is it that you are getting from that particular. Now let us go into some points where you can distinguish a certain, you know, uh, what should I say, a certain business establishment or yourself or as an entrepreneur to shine out among others and to be recognized as a brand. Brand, as you say, is something which has to be built up over a period of time. That is very, very important. Branding is something which, it's not something just because he spent 5 million bucks, you know, getting Tendulkar or Virat Kohli to uh, you know, spawn, I mean, what should I say? Advertising. No, that is not branding. That is just pure advertising. Enticement, if you ask me. Branding is something that you. Uh, do I have time? Yes. How much more? Four, ten, minutes. 10 minutes. Okay. Branding is something, I mean, to. Create your own brand, I mean to stand out as a brand, takes time. It really takes time. And it is important to be consistent in your quest towards creating yourself as a brand. There are some certain tips I would like to give you. I will share with you now in the next couple of minutes. As to these, if you follow these principles, it would be very effective in creating your brand. Okay. One thing is attentive interaction. Have you ever been to a store where you want to buy something and then you find that two of the sales girls are chit chatting in a corner? You have to call them. And then grudgingly they'll come to you. And even after they come to you, you tell them they'll scratch the head, 40 watts are so does it happen to you? Yes. yes. It happens in many places. I'm not saying no. Why? You need to be attentive while attending to a customer. You could be sitting in your office. You have a you are uh, developing an uh, app or something like that. You have a client in front of you. Okay. Now the client is talking to you, asking you something. What are you doing? Probably you are watching that TV behind that guy. Or else you are once in a while glancing on your phone to see whether any images have come or anybody has posted anything. And then uh, you tell the guy, ah, I know you can multitask. Excuse me. 
Ya, yeah, Amal, I'm here. I know you can multitask, but sorry for that interruption. It was one of your uh, university guys only. I think he wants to attend here. It's important that you pay attention while giving attention. You may be smart. You may be able to do 10 things at a time. But when you have a client or a customer in front of you, it is important that you give 100% attention to what that person is saying. Because that person will feel I am being heard. My needs are being fulfilled. This person is genuine. He is concerned about what I want. Okay, that is one. Second thing is, you have to anticipate the need of a customer. Okay, you have to anticipate the needs. While talking to a customer, in a few sentences, you should be able to form in your mind roughly what this person wants. You have to be, that is something, it takes time, but you can inculcate that habit of mentally preparing, okay, this ko kya chai? Bande telling me so many things, immediately I must form an impression what exactly he wants, okay? Then, somebody said just now, prompt service. Prompt service is something, prompt service is something, if you ask me, it is, uh, I don't know about the service sectors, but I can tell you in sectors like, you know, you want to get your TV service or you want to call a, you know, a plumber or things like that. It's more or less a chalta hai attitude. Okay. I told you I'll come tomorrow. Doesn't mean tomorrow. It could be one week later. Okay. Prompt service is something that lot of customers will <coughs> Of course, things have changed now. Nowadays, you go give your watch for repair or something. After one day or two days, you get a message or you get a call. Your product is ready. Please come and collect it. That is fine. But where such a mechanism doesn't exist, what I mean to say is that don't give customers false promises. Okay? Stick to your time. When you say, I'll give you after three days, better to say, I'll give you after four days than rather than saying three days and then after that saying, please come tomorrow. Right? Then, one very good point would be that what they say is don't promise more and under deliver. That is a very critical component of our, you know, business ventures. There is nothing wrong in telling your customer client that we will try to deliver this itna kaam karega or we will do this and then give something superior to them. It's what you say overdoing it, but not, you know, promising more and delivering less. Never try to avoid that. It gives a very bad impression. Not only that, the customer gets deflated. He thinks that, oh, you promised me so many things. He will be having visions while going to sleep also. He will be thinking, oh, yeah, it's going to be a wonderful. This guy said he will stick to your suit like this, like that and all that. And then when he sees the product, flat. It's better that to tell that guy, okay, we'll try our best, but I can't promise you it will be like Michael Jackson's, you know, moonwalk dress. But we'll try to be somewhere there. But when he gets it, and then he realizes, wow, this is better than that. Is he not elated? He is elated. So never promise more. Promise less and deliver more. Last two points. 
last two points. Can anybody guess what will be the last two points which I feel are the most important aspects for your customer to have trust in you, to become a loyal customer and, you know, to regard your business as the brand which he or she would like to retain. What would be the two points? What was it? Guarantee, warranty. Uh, guarantee, warranty, that is also there. The promise has been delivered to me. Trust. The promise has been delivered to me. Transparency. Discount. Trust. Mr. Amal Raj here, I know many of you all may be knowing him, but he is a recent acquaintance of mine. I realize that he is a fountain of knowledge. But then, what, did, what was the word you used? Trust. Trust. Believe me, friends, for a business, your own business, to be regarded as the brand image for your industry or for your whichever uh, you know field you are in, trust and honesty are two things that you have to take care of. Being honest is you know will never you will never suffer any loss because of being honest you can tell people you can be honest on so many factors you can say see we are not uh, capable of providing what service you want but we will try our best like okay we are deficient in the sense that we are not up to that mark you can be honest you can tell customers very honestly no, it cannot be delivered in 7 days. We need 15 days. Be honest about it. You may lose that business. A lot of people come with deadlines. No, I want a, I want a delivery within 10 days. Then you will scrounge together. Okay, let's take the order in the meantime. After the 10 days, we will tell him. Okay, you are extend by another 2 days, 3 days. Nothing wrong. You can, as I say, you can tell more and then deliver early. No problem. But don't over promise. Be honest about it and then trust. Trust is something we all know which can only be earned. You cannot buy trust. You cannot buy your customer's trust by offering him free things, offering him discounts, offering him whatever. You cannot earn the trust of a customer. A customer, once the trust is lost, you can be sure you have lost not only that customer, but you have also lost the trust of that customer's people whom he will spread the word. We may suffer financially in some deal, but we should never break the trust that the customer gives on us. That, my dear friends, is a little bit of nuggets of knowledge or rather my experiences that I would like to share to you uh, if we'll have a question and answer. If anybody would like to have any doubts cleared or would like to ask me something, most welcome. Thank you. So, that is a show brand. Yes. Now we can have PNS session. Okay. Sir, in offline market, how can we make in current trend? How can we make the people recurring? If at all someone buys some products from us, mm -hmm. how can we make them recurring? Because in online we can fix you by using apps and doing it. Yes. But uh, in the offline market, whenever some person some buys anything, mm -hmm. so after the certain time, because we might be having multiple products in the So, how to make those people recurring? Because currently, recurring rate is very less for most of the business. Yes. Uh, well, it, uh, if we can be a little more specific in what line of business that could be. For example, for example uh, if you consider a business with doctor, patient, mm. okay, the patient initially he will be having some stress. Uh, over a period of time, there will be very multiple doctors comes into the same locality mm. and the accessibility also will be there. But uh, we want that uh, patient to recover, uh, I mean, to, uh, he should be recurring at least 
once in an year or else whatever the period of time see here again it depends upon the what the confidence that the doctor has you know put in the customer or his client rather here it is a patient okay again trust basically how much trust have you given him it could be you know we you know a lot of instances where they say doctor simply they will write whatever medicines or they will say okay you have to get your test done here done there whatever it all depends upon how the doctor treats the customer there are some doctors who will watch the time while he is watching the patient because he knows he has to see 20 patients that day he has got only one hour so he will give you 3 minutes so if you go to such a i mean if your doctor's attitude is as such you might consider no oh he is not paying me full attention he will go elsewhere so one thing where doctors are concerned if you ask me it is the the you know the care that you show for your patient at that point of time yes sir you are having a very long experience uh, have you found that it is possible to please all your customers if not then can you uh, talk about that well that's a very nice question i can definitely look back on my career and tell that yes i have already i have tried always to please all my customers but there will be a odd customer who goes away unpleased but you can endeavor to even even for the most uh, dissatisfied customer okay normally it goes like this the customer says che, i am not going to come back to your shop something like that he'll say and go okay that would be the time when you have to take your ego a little bit swallow your ego be humble humility will count there you will still go up to the customer sir if you feel i have done i mean you know, injustice fine i will try to rectify that failing which also please understand that i don't bear any ill will against you, you dis if you decide that at this moment of time that i have wronged you i can't change that judgment for you but please do not consider it to be ill will on my side you are right i am right but somewhere we have to draw a line in business somewhere we have to draw a line that we cannot concede to everything yeah considering the discipline era where operational business are changing right in traditional business you generally have a contact with the customer but how do you do the same and when you don't have a contact especially with digital if you don't generally see a customer at all how do you differentiate in terms of Motion well, I was afraid that question will come to me. It did come. <laughs> Thank you for that. I know. Uh, it has. It is a question which uh, I personally have been wrestling with for the last ten years or so. Um, let me be very frank. Well, today's customer is such that I know you want to buy a product, you can always find it cheaper on the net. Okay. Okay. Let, let us put it this way. He has got a traditional customer. Now the customer is enamored by the going to the net. He is not able to contact the customer or rather you know as he says the one to one per interpersonal relationship is not able to develop because of that. Frankly speaking I did not go into that sphere. Like we decided we are not going to go into that sphere, we just maintain what the traditional thing is. But I have been thinking about that topic also. Like here, what type of interaction you can do is, if you have the contact of your customers, maintain them, you know, periodically by, you know, sending in some, you know, mail or uh, SMS or something like that and try to keep in contact. That is the best I can say you because frankly I too I am in the same boat as you are. Thank you. Yes, sir. In the retail space, uh, I work for a book uh, retail store, and the issue that you mentioned that you know the 
uh, sales girl and sales boys are not as enthusiastic as uh, we want them to be. So what would you suggest? What would you suggest uh, us in the, in the management to do for them to be as enthusiastic and as exuberant as uh, the company wants to be? You say you work for a bookstore. You used to work for a bookstore, right? Did you read books while, while you are still working there? Yes, sir. Yes. Have you tried to, you know, inculcate the habit of reading with that those stuff? Sorry to, but they're not that educated. They're not that educated. Yes, they're yeah, but still they can read something, no? They can read, uh, you know, fiction, you know, at least some nice uh, fiction. Well, I'll put it this way. Gentlemen, go to a good doubt. For any business to flourish, you need to have that passion. You need to have that passion to do that business. First of all, you must learn to love the work that you are doing. If you ask me, I will never tire of talking about footwear any time of the day or night. Because for the last 40 odd years, I have been in this business. It's a passion. So, as he says, this gentleman says, in a bookstore, there are people who are not passionate about it. Inculcate a habit of reading books for the staff, or rather the staff also read, have reading corners for children, or storytelling, or whatever it is. Create that passion. Create that passion even among the sales girls and all to read. May not be big, big thousand pages, uh, big, big books. Even small books, nothing wrong. Even magazines are good enough. I would say create that passion in them. Yes, nowadays, yeah. every, nowadays, every product or every service just looks like same. And the main challenge is uh, that customer is only <coughs> making us choose by the price only. So how do we can be different? Every brand and every service look like same. So how we can make feel the customer that we are different? You you should not buy from our company. Uh, because I, if I need one product, I will go to 10, 10 different places where either either it might be online or offline. Before buy, buying a product, I will go at least. So, how we can make it? To buy from our. See, offline is very easy because physically you will go to a store, physically you will see the product, you will talk to the salespeople there or the owner or whatever it is. But where online again is like that gentleman saying, it is a field where, you know, everything has been flattened now. It's possibly because if you ask me as a consumer myself, I too at times buy things online. At times I don't buy it because after one or two experiences where, you know, bitter experiences, I felt like no. If I can get a product offline, I would rather go for a product offline. It is only in circumstances where I am very sure that this product, yes, is the same product which I saw offline and I am buying it online, I would go for it. I don't know, I am not into the software field and all that, but I think uh, many people here will agree with me that we are being influenced into liking certain brands or not liking certain brands. Or rather, rather, not liking is not the word. We are being pushed towards certain brands. And it's being promoted as if it is the best. I think you have to use your own judgment. As a consumer myself, I would uh, have a mix of both. I would also scout the online stores as well as offline stores and then try to find a balance somewhere. Thank you all. Right. Thank you. That's it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Please gather for a group. Thank you.